A late goal killed them all together. I'm joined here by Sports Encyclopedia, John Duggan, but more importantly, Spurs fan as well. How's the heart? MT and Anthony, uh, it's, it's, the heart is just dull and kind of um, depressed, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> so I'll probably need, I don't know, Parge or Ready Break or something to get myself going this morning after yesterday's horror show at Anfield. I love the throwing the TV out of the, out of the window meme. Yeah, I was just, I, that's how exactly how I felt. Musa Sissoko could have scored, should have scored. Uh, it went high into the, it, it, it should have been a Croke Park as effort. Uh, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> Dali Ali nearly chipped the goalie. And then Liverpool at the other end, Hugo Lloris, uh, World Cup winner, makes a howler of mistake. Oh, Alderweireld bundles the ball home into the net. And Tottenham live up to the uh, belief that I have of them of, as life's mirage. You know, you're, you're walking through the desert. You feel yeah. like the water's getting closer every single year. You get there and then there's just uh, sand and, you know, you're, you're just uh, like wilting in the heat again. Uh, <laughs> it's now one point out of 15. I haven't won since the 10th of February in the Premier League. If Arsenal win tonight, they're down to fourth on 61 points with Manchester United. Uh, Chelsea be on 60 points and now they're struggling uh, a team that nearly won the league three years ago in that battle with Leicester that had been third as well in the league that they're now 16 points off Manchester City they were in the uh, conversation for the title not so long ago um, as somebody said to me the Spurs will always let you down in the end and they're living up to that they're, they're lacking a winning mentality this is a massive round to finish off off the ball AM this morning uh, but it is, it is a team uh, and a club that has uh, lacked a winning mentality uh, despite how well they've been managed and it couldn't come any better now this move to the new stadium on Wednesday one out of 50, I didn't realise it was that bad. 15, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, I, I remember a couple of, maybe two months ago, maybe a month and a half ago, I was in here with the guys and Owen was saying, you know, what of us, and I said, no. I said, they won't. I said, they'll falter. And it was before this run. And sure enough, they did. I was hoping, hoping they wouldn't, but of course they did. I don't know what it is. I, really I think, I think squad strength has got a lot to do with it. Yeah. No signings. Uh, you can't compete at this elite level. Graeme Soonis right. was talking on Sky yesterday about uh, being at 98% or not being at 100%, being at 98%. And if you don't boast your squad and like the players like Harry Winks getting injured, yeah. um, you, you, you then, at, at the elite level, in the fine margins of a global game, and it was a good game yesterday, I thought, yeah. it was an open game, uh, more attacking than defending, uh, you, can't, you, can't, you can't compete without that X factor of a squad. Uh, and Tottenham have, have lacked the squad strength uh, that you know, other teams have had, especially Manchester City, who, who have that interchangeable squad. So it's a real concern. Um, and Hugo Lloris, a World Cup winner, they have big decisions to make now. Does he drop Hugo Lloris, a World Cup winner? He's made eight mistakes leading to goals since August 2016. I think the BBC were quoting that, mm. that stat. And uh, Paolo Gazzaniga has played very well when he's come in. Do you drop a World Cup winning goalkeeper who's made a howler, cost you two points, and possibly uh, really help Liverpool in this uh, mystical way that they keep on finding results in their, in their yeah. title push. Two points clear City now and uh, get into that stadium. Uh, I've been reading about the stadium and all the things they have in it and everything like that. So playing Crystal Palace on Wednesday and uh, just the home crowd, the excitement of a new stadium. Yeah. Uh, we saw Robbie Keane scoring the other day in a kind of a warm-up match and Paul Gascoigne coming on. But uh, a real worry, a real worry. See, I go. think going yeah. into a new stadium in the middle of a season is a ridiculous idea. Well, I th it, well, it actually could be something that they need. They need. They need. There kind of needs to be a bit of positivity. I would. I would imagine around the, the supporters, and this will be a bit because because <laughs> as bad as John is feeling here, you know, the Ireland supporters there week in week out. You can imagine, you know, after a run like that, one out of fifteen. So this at least will kind of deflect a bit of it. You know, into our new stadium, we get a win hopefully against Crystal Palace. But and you can't kind of rely on the whole home advantage. I know you could say where they are now isn't home either, but. The whole point of home advantage is you're familiar with it. They're going into a stadium they're not familiar with. Yes, it is very, very strange. Uh, like the, the stadium is extremely well designed. Mm. Uh, there's got a seventeen and a half thousand kind of um, you know st big section in the south stand, a bit like Dortmund's ground. Mm. Um, a sixty-two thousand stadium. It, the acoustics are apparently amazing. Um, it, but it, yeah, it, it, what is the advantage? I think is what you're getting yeah. at. What is the advantage coming in here now in April? Uh, obviously, they wanted to get it before to the end of the season. They played well yesterday. On their day, they're capable of beating. Manchester City in the, yeah. in the two-legged Champions League uh, quarter-final. Yeah. Um, they're capable of winning one of the matches, but can they win both the matches? And the consistency is the, uh, is the, is, is the issue. And, uh, and the I'll, strength and depth. And the strength said. and depth. And, uh, but I've been reading about the, the new stadium. Cashless payments, you can't use cash inside the stadium. They've got their own microbrewery. Uh, which, is a, yeah, which is called Beaver Town, and the, the longest, uh, the, the, I think it was the, the goal line bar that won the longest bars in Europe, like in terms of length, 
so you, all of the things that I'll be sampling hopefully soon. But uh, no decent uh, goalkeeper. Uh, but but uh, but, oh. uh, but, 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 but a team uh, maybe maybe not in the in the Europa League next season rather than the Champions League. This is like a billion uh, pound stadium. You've got to be in the Champions League next season. So uh, we, we, it's, there's the hand wringing, there's the bedwetting, there's all the stuff that we're doing now as Spurs fans. And we've got another probably six weeks of, of, of pain to go through now.